Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we will learn about an object oriented programming concept called encapsulation and this is going to be very easy and very interesting. So when we talk about object oriented programming in any programming language there are four basic concepts of object oriented programming. The first one is encapsulation. Then we have inheritance, polymorphism and abstraction. So I am going to tell you and teach you about all of these four concepts of course we have objects and classes as concepts but these are after objects and classes these are the four basic concepts so if I talk about encapsulation I will just go to my visual studio code and this is the script we created in our last session when we learned about classes so I will close this and I will create a new script and I will call this as encapsulation.js and here before I begin the practicals let me go to Google and search for encapsulation in JavaScript. So if I go to the images and here let me go to this image first so that you can get some theory before we start the practicals and here you can see it says encapsulation is a mechanism of restricting direct access to some of the objects components so sometimes we need to uh, secure some information or we do not want a direct access to some information or some object components in that way we use encapsulation and that is the mechanism this mechanism is called encapsulation so it is also bundling data with methods that operate on the data and it is required for security or controlled access high hide implementation and expose the behavior only and uh, modify the implementation anytime so I will give you a practical example and this will be more clear to you so here you can see one of the examples of encapsulation so here we have some functions and we have set and get functions so you can see the name property or the name variable is get and set through functions it is not exposed directly and anybody who wants to get or access this a name variable he has to create an object of the class and then use get and set methods to access this variable or access this information so let me show you a practical example I will create a class and I will create a class called employee and we have already learned how to do that in the last session and here suppose I have some employee information so I will use some get and set methods so I will create a function set employee details and in this method I will say this dot name equals name so I'm get taking name I'm taking ID and I'm taking phone number as arguments in this function and then I'm setting this equal to the class variable here I'm saying this dot ID equals ID and this dot phone number equals phone number so I am setting this in set employee details and then I will have other functions to get employee name so somebody who wants to get an employee name can use this function and in this function I will just return this dot name similarly I will have a function for get employee ID and here I will return this dot ID and then I will have a function called get employee phone number and here it will return this dot phone number so you can see this is what I have created a class employee and I have a set employee details function where I am setting the details and for getting the details or accessing any of the property of the employee class we use the get methods now to instantiate the class or create an object I will say let employee one equals new and the class name employee and that's it now to set any value I will say emp one dot set employee details and I have to pass the variables so I will say uh, name is John ID is 1001 and I will give some phone number here and now to access I will say employee dot get employee name I'll use this function and I can also print it using console.log statement so this function will get the employee name similarly 
I can get employee ID using the function get employee ID and I can get the employee phone number using the function get employee phone number so if I now run this program here you can see I have got the output and I'm able to access these information using the functions and only after creating the class so that is how I can do the encapsulation in a very simple way in JavaScript and you can see some more examples here so this is how you can do encapsulation in JavaScript in the coming session I will explain about other concepts of object-oriented programming and I will suggest that you do some more hands-on and you can also look at some more examples online so that this concept of encapsulation is very clear to you and I will meet you in the next session of JavaScript thank you for watching